So you are? I don't see Colleen. Yeah, she just, okay. maybe I didn't count her because she was moving. Yeah. So we're ready to go. Yeah. Tomorrow. All right. All right, folks, I'd like to call the uh, <coughs> January, our second January budget meeting of the Champlain Valley School District to order. Uh, I have two adjustments to the agenda uh, for item 5.8. No, this wouldn't be item 5.8, but it would be a discussion matter, item 4.1. Uh, just a short discussion on the governor's laundry list of uh, items that he released last Thursday. I sent that out yesterday to see if folks could um, read that and get some ideas. Separate from, I don't know what he said today. Anybody listen to his butt? You did? Was it good or was it bad? No? Was it crazy? And then uh, at the end of the meeting, um, Prior to adjournment, we will have an executive session to discuss uh, personnel matters. And is there anything else that anyone wants to add? I just wrote a reminder that there's a few board members who haven't set up two-factor authentication yet. So if you haven't, if you don't know that you have, you probably haven't and uh, you're overdue. So we'd like to get that done by next week if possible. So send me, shoot me an email and I'll have somebody reach out and help you, out, help you get it done. And if you try to open up a Google Doc and it doesn't work, then you've obviously enabled two-factor <laughs> authentication. So, um, so we'll move on to uh, 3.0 audience and communications. Uh, is there anyone here in the audience that would like to speak separate from items that are on the agenda? Hearing none, we'll move on to 4.1, which is a discussion of the, the governor's list of ideas for um, school budgets and finance and cost containment. This was a request by Lynn. I, I read the article. I thought there were some interesting ones in there. What caught your attention? I, I think it was more just looking through that list and, and realizing that we did <coughs> a really good job with our budgeting this year, not only this year, but in the past and, and looking forward. I think almost everything every idea that he has that we could possibly control, we actually have come in at his recommendation or below. Um, I think the one piece that would be a little troublesome um, if he came forward with it, again, who knows based on what he said today and what he said in November, what was it about negotiating with Jello? Um, and what he put in his, his proposal last week um, was if we had to hit a 1.5% spending cap, um, what that would do, um, what, what type of funds we would have to come up with. And that was based on the per pupil spending in that chart? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I didn't know if anyone else had a different take on it or. I have a couple questions for clarity. For clarity. <laughs> so, what is our current? student to staff ratio, like aggregate. Do we have that? Because <laughs> he's shooting for like 1.5, and I'm just curious where we are with that. Depends if you include bus drivers, school lunch workers, and custodial staff. What does he include? Do we know? We don't. We don't know. Awesome. Okay. So what if we include them, what is it? If we don't include them, what is it? So if we include them. It's one point. Uh, uh, one student, it, we're pretty close either way, truthfully. Okay. Um, Are we but, under or over? Uh, we, if you include bus drivers and lunchroom staff, we're just over. Okay, and if uh, we don't, we're just under. If we under. don't, we're, we're actually more Well, according to, you know, like one set of yeah. data that came out, we looked good. Good, yeah. Okay. But it turns out later on later, they have some not the data that they have in the US. I see. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, just so. We're either side of five to one or? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and again, I, I don't know the number right off the top of my head exact, but um, with bus drivers and uh, sort of that contingent, let's call it, uh, we're at 1.5. It might, we might be at uh, six to one. With the bus drivers? Right. 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 Yeah, the other direction. Yeah, yeah. we're just over. Yeah. 
four point three to one. Yeah. It's, it's remarkably low when you. I mean, yeah. not good when you look at the the numbers, but um, yeah, we could. It's because we employ everybody. That's one of the comments I made. Oh. Um, <coughs> some of us had an opportunity to make comment to our associations, and one of the comments I made was that I hope that they would not include bus drivers, and if they did, they need a metric to figure out what would be the normalized number of bus drivers there would be in systems that don't need bus drivers, because it doesn't seem like that would be a very fair comparison. It also, it also penalizes rural districts, right? If you have a rural right. district, you got to do more bus drivers because they got to go further, and that, you know, we yeah. work pretty hard not to penalize rural districts, rural districts. So. It also penalizes you if you hire your own, if you have your own in-house, yeah. because if it's contracted, it never shows up in the ratios. Yeah. So if you, if you take out those positions that might be contracted or, or mm -hmm. at other schools or whatever, are we <coughs> then we're at 5 to 1? or? Yeah, no, we're better than 5 to 1. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're, we're, yeah, we're below 5 to 1 at that point. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think the chat, the, the state has an opportunity to better define a lot of statistics that they're using uh, to make sure that everybody is comparing apples to apples because it's easy to look at, and, well, if they didn't do this and if they included right. that and, and, and the problem is nobody really seems to know. Yeah, and I think we have equalized bus drivers. <laughs> 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 I think the problem is is that it does the more you the more you sharpen the pencil on that metric, the less useful it becomes, right? It's more accurate but less useful because you start, well, how about maintenance? Depends how many buildings you have, and then how about uh, school psychologists? Do, is that you know those kind of support? You know, it, at some point it becomes um, uh, you've exempted so many things that it's uh, it gets complicated. Mm -hmm. but, but I mean, let's take a step back and like. <laughs> Why are we even discussing metrics if we're concerned that the governor isn't even giving us a metric that means anything? So how would we feed back to AOE? So go back and ask the governor what he really wants the metric to be and define what it is, and then we'll all have the same data. Mm -hmm. I mean, yep. the, first, uh, the first spreadsheet that came out said we were, one to, to, we were eight to one on some yeah. of those. So We like that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, Amanda, if never feel shy about asking questions. I mean, it's one okay. of the joys Good. of having you here. <laughs> <laughs> I keep us talking, yeah. folks. Um, so my other question, this was regarding the special education um, sir, uh, study that they cited. They didn't give a link to the study, otherwise I would have read it. Um, but they were talking about how they looked at students on IE IEPs and how their outcomes uh, were no different um, in Vermont versus other states, <coughs> in Vermont spends twice as much. Did they just look at the outcomes of student on IE, students on IEPs, or did they look at the outcomes of like total student body? Because like, sure, maybe the the students on IEPs aren't necessarily doing their best, like any better. They might be doing the best they can wherever, but having the extra supports for those students on IEPs could be helping the rest of the classroom. And so that was a question that I had, and I didn't know if that was addressed in the study. So, um, and as an aside, we can probably send the link to the study to all of you so you can okay. read it. It's lengthy. But, um, so the funding study is acknowledging that um, Vermont does spend twice as much on special education than other states. So what other states? There's a number. Uh, than all others. I mean, really, is it's. Like the average of the other states? Yes. Or, okay, because if we spend twice as much as Texas, I'm Given the problems that they're having, but and significantly more than our <coughs> closest neighbors in New England. Okay, um, but there's and, and I don't know how I, I could share a lot more about the study and sort of um, <coughs> impacts around it. When it comes to outcomes, they're they're just acknowledging that the achievement gaps that exist everywhere still exist in Vermont, and so okay. we spend more money. And the metrics that they use, which don't take growth into consideration, and, and we could say a lot about the metric, but the metric that we use, um, our outcomes aren't significantly different than other parts of the state. What they, in terms of, uh, are we spending more because some of those resources are benefiting students not identified? Actually, what the funding study points out is that our funding current funding mechanism is too restrictive and prevents us from oh, doing just that. Okay. And a lot of the funding study is proposing different models of funding special education that gives schools more flexibility to be able to invest and prevent kids from being eligible. Um, we support that notion. Uh, there's a lot more in the funding study that we can unpack, and I'm 
happy to respond to questions. I um, I don't know how long we have, Dave, though. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's I quite think, the study, the and there's a lot of implications. No, I, I'm glad you asked that question. I think the first step is just share the link to that study. Sure. And, yeah, that would be great. Yeah. And um, I will gladly read the abstract. <laughs> <laughs> Carefully. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Colleen. So we all got sent a copy, a link to that from the VSBA. We went to the VSBA. Right. There's a link to it, and they actually have an excellent two-page. It, it's one of the best executive summaries I've seen. It's an excellent two-page summary for a lengthy report with appendices, and you know I think one of the big pieces. The takeaway for Vermont is the, the uh, to get services to kids, there's a requirement to categorize kids into and put them into the little boxes so that they get labeled, <coughs> you know, behavior issues or whatever it might be. But the categorization brings services to kids. So Vermont has has a tradition of uh, helping get services to kids. It doesn't mean that there are more kids with needs or that it's over identifying perhaps but it's it's part of that play between allowing for bringing services to kids and getting the funding to support it and not yeah I agree and I think we all you know I've had a chance to testify in front of house ed about reaction to the funding study and and part of the complexity of special ed funding is that we we become ultimately responsible for providing a number of services that kids can't access either because they are mental health supports that aren't available in our community-based services there was a study done in 2013 that shows just how you know dollar wise what special ed spends to make up for the fact that kids don't have mental health supports and families don't have wraparound services schools are the provider of last resort we don't have the ability to say no um, and we we also kind of shoulder the responsibility when our funding mechanism this is a little bit related to Colleen's point when special ed funding when special ed is the only mechanism to receive support because our funding goes to identified kids and not allowed to be spent or at least a, a very small percentage can be spent on MTSS and prevention that's another reason why special ed costs are high so again without kind of there is a lot to it, and I think the, um, <coughs> some of Governor Scott's recommendations related to just decreasing special ed funding are problematic if we do that absent of work on the other end. Right. You know, so we, it, there's good work that we can do that will eventually contain costs in special ed. It's tricky to just think of decreasing what we get for special ed without doing that work on the other right. end of the system. Okay. Do we have a, I'm sorry, this is my last question. Yeah. Do we have a strategy sort of at the executive level, you, Megan, mm -hmm. Jean, to have a voice in this process? Because I think a couple of these things, you look at special ed and staffing, right? And even though it's kind of maybe not very well defined now, mm -hmm. those are where the real money is. Right. And to have a voice in the process and help, you know, to the extent that they don't have it set in stone, it's our chance to kind of guide it in, in a way that works. Megan has a major voice because she's president of the um, Student Support Special Ed Directors Association right now. So sh when these things come up, that's the group that they go to first. I have a voice because I'm still on the trustees. This is my last year in that um, role, but that's another place. That's why we were both invited to um, provide input to the survey, the governor's laundry list. And Jean and Mark both have a voice when they attend their VASBO meetings. So there is a, a structure for providing input. And, and furthermore, there was a webinar that was happening concurrent with this meeting right now that we all got invited <coughs> to. And you could sign up and watch it later. But there was another, you know, if you have any questions for that webinar, I sent them a note and you know, these are my comments mm -hmm. that I want fed through VSBA. It's important to let VSBA know what we think because I think sometimes there's a disconnect if we don't become the squeaky wheel. So I would encourage everyone to do that. And I've also just gone to my local representatives and senators and told them as well, like, the governor doesn't understand our budget process. He doesn't understand our calendar. So please feed that back up to him before he 
comes to us in June with something to do with a budget that goes into effect in six days. So, yeah. So like we we can <coughs> all we can all make a difference. So, all right. Last question on this. Yeah. Not a question. Yep. Uh, a little Google search. Our student staff ratio for fiscal year 2017 was 5.28 to one. So on the good That's side the of other. five. What's the document that you're looking at? Uh, it's by the Agency of Education, teacher staff, student ratios, fiscal year 2016-2017. Does it have like last year and this year? Yes. Is it that one? Yes. Yeah. Is it dated sometime in September, October? Uh, well, it's always a fiscal year behind yeah. their it's reports. When they yeah. I mean, from where we are, we're in fiscal year 18 now. Yeah, I was just curious when it came out. That, that was all. That's what I was asking. Um, I mean, I meant what I said. I wasn't being snarky. Oh, I love all your questions. <laughs> I apologize. October 4th, 2017. Right. Yeah, so that... that was when we that's the one that they're kind that's of the one that could be level. questionable so yeah. that's why we're but thank you for finding that all right so we'll move on to 5.1 um, action matters uh, could I get a motion to approve bringing Charlotte transportation in-house so moved second second any discussion we discussed this last month um, with respect to changing the contract nature of Charlotte Transportation and bringing it in line with the rest of the district. Are there any issues that came up while you drove home last step after that last meeting? No? All right, hearing none, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, we move on to 5.2. Could I get a motion to adopt the final budget? Second. Any discussion? Really, no changes since the last time you saw this. So, how many buses? Six. Okay. But two of them were mini buses. Okay. So, <laughs> thanks for asking. How many? Those are in the articles. <laughs> okay. Any? Uh, we did have long conversations about this over three just, um, multiple uh, meetings. Actually, just one change is if, if you're looking at this. Um, page with the tax rates on it. Um, we found out that Heinsberg did have a tax rate change last year. Their numbers looked funny because they had a reappraisal and so the numbers had changed. They did have an interim update. So while the tax rate on this page didn't change, it used to be, it says, you know, the year to year change on the, I'm sorry, the CLA. The CLA changed. Um, it was on the original document you might have it was last year was 90 percent so it showed like a 10 percent increase but they had actually done an interim update in july august after the townwide reappraisal so the town is actually getting billed at 1.1 so that's why now you see a minus 0.8 percent so mm -hmm. thank you to laura nassau who works for me who did a little fact checking for me and found mm -hmm. that, that we didn't catch the last I don't think we ever got notified, but they, mm -hmm. they did change it. So that's just if you're, and um, that, that, that number's on a lot of the budget documents, so we should make sure it gets picked up. But. <coughs> yep. <coughs> it's being challenged. Yep. We just don't know. We don't know. I mean, this is the published numbers in the state right now. Correct. And, uh, I'm sorry, Wilson's challenging what CLA? CLA. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it was a uh, uh, outlier on a commercial property that they're trying to say is an outlier. That's, I think it's what they're doing, challenging. Okay, thank you. Yep. Do you want to discuss in detail a little bit more about the part of the budget that we can control versus the number that people see here since we are in Williston and it's a relatively high number? <coughs> <coughs> Maybe not. Best I mean, way like on the bridge? Are you talking about the CLA itself? No. No, I'm talking about the 11.9%. And how, just clarifying that what uh, people are going to vote on is that we've put together a budget that's a 2.3% increase, and external factors, including the CLA, make the total aggregate for Williston 11.9. So we, as the board here, have done what we can, and we were, you know, 
kind of just a summary like that, Jean, to just go through and discuss, like, we did it last time too, but since we're here and there might be questions on that number, I think might be good to reiterate it. That last page from our last meeting, the pre-CLA tax rates that talks about the 10% increase and the fact that what we control is basically 30% of that and factors outside of our control is about 70% of that, yeah, right. 10 cent. Is, is that what you're you're talking about? Yes. Mm -hmm. We're reiterating that here to make sure that the message that people get is that, you know, we can control about two point, where we put together a budget that's a 2.3% increase from last year. It's under the 2.5 mark that uh, the governor would like, and while the number that they might that Williston might see is 11.9, <coughs> and that's pretty high, we can't control very much of that at all. Like Lynn said, about 30 percent of it. Correct. The other ones are <coughs> statewide adjustments and the CLA. Right. So if they, if, I guess my message to people is, if you're upset about this number, this 11.9 percent number, speak to your state legislators, um, and because. Sorry, because that's the number that Wilson's going to Are you with us, Colleen? Sorry. Um, no. I'm not seeing 11% change for Wilson. 11.9. It's W, w the far final right. Column. From the final column. Okay. 11.9 W. It's the grade column on the far right. So that's the bump Wilson. I thought you were going down the Wilson. I wasn't clear where you were. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, and and the you know the connection between our earliest con earlier conversation about the governor's list of recommendations. That's how he's trying to influence that number down. So right. it's not like they're not doing anything. It's just, as Dave says, the timing is a little problematic because we have to yeah. come up with a budget before those decisions get made. And right. but but still, it wouldn't hurt for people to speak up to your state legislator. Like, mm -hmm. if you are not happy with this number, please <laughs> speak to them. Voting down the budget, that's not going to get us anywhere. Because 2.3% for an increase from this last year to this year is, it's, it's you know, we've done our work as the school board. Talk to your state legislator so they do their work. Well, it underscore the 2.3% here in Williston. <clears throat> the 2.3% includes $875,000 of new bonded indebtedness yes. for Williston and Shelburne. That's 1.2% of the 2.3% is just for bonded indebtedness. Mm -hmm. And most of that Williston. And most of it Williston, yeah. yes. Yeah. <coughs> just to emphasize the point. And that's <laughs> really, really, really. Thank you, Lynchburg. <laughs> Charlotte would like to put their name in there, too. <laughs> All right. Good points. Appreciate it, Amanda. Um, any further comments on the, the final budget? <clears throat> Hearing none, all those in favor of adopting the final budget, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Our next uh, action matter is 5.3, approve the articles and warning. Uh, these are in our packet. It's the warning for the budget, fund balance, buses, <coughs> and then the fourth article for um, applying the construction fund. So could I get a motion to approve the articles in warning? So moved. Second. Second. Any further discussion? One thing just to point out, because it's a change, um, Article 6, mm -hmm. to establish the date of the annual meeting. So this year, the CVSD annual meeting is like February 20, I've got to get it wrong. Where's Sandy? It's the <coughs> Thursday before vacation. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Right, so, so um, <laughs> we had a little uh, internal uh, head scratching to figure out why that was, and, and we think it was a holdover from the prior year. Remember last year we had a CVSD meeting, a CSSU meeting, and all the boards all had to meet, and it was too much for the Monday before town meeting. And I think we just carried it forward, um, even though we didn't really need to. So this, if you approve it, is to move the CVSD annual meeting back to the Monday before, or is it town meeting? The, so before town meeting, I never, never know which day is actually town meeting, but it's the Monday before the voting. So uh, true, right? But our seat, so ours would be well, and, and everybody does their um, Australian ballot on Tuesday. I just always get mixed up if that's town meeting or Monday's town meeting. But in any case, it'll be <laughs> this date here is the Monday before the Tuesday of Australian ballot. And I think that we left it like this. Last 
last year in the morning because we were unclear about how we wanted to interact with the community and um, because of the local traditions you know St. George has a very intimate experience of meeting and Shelburne has a long tradition of back-to-back -back school board town going back and forth and each town was different so that's why last year we hadn't yet committed to what the new vision would be thinking we'd figure it out between then and now and I guess it looks like it's pretty logical to go for a 5 p.m. the night before I actually would <coughs> suggest if we could move it to four because the like Charlotte does our has always done our presentation at six because the select board does theirs at seven so if we do ours at five at CVU it makes it harder for the Charlotte I, I don't I'm that's why we it left up. it on the because we hadn't figured it out yet no. so yeah. then that, that's something you guys can need to decide I, I've also heard that people can't get out of work at four yeah, so that's move it to four that puts the whole population people are working got it <coughs> well we could just change it around in Charlotte and we could do our school board at seven yeah. for those of us who live in Heinsburg it's easy you know <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so we'll leave it. We'll leave it as written. <coughs> um, I hear what you're saying. Like I, I'd like to have it at four, also, because then I got a truck over to yeah. Shelburne so I can give Representative Webb a hard time. <laughs> but uh, I'll just send my questions in this year, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so um, next year. Next year. Well, remember the 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 first half of this is what you're handling at your annual meeting so it doesn't really have to be a whole hour-long meeting unless right, you have right because I think we're all we're assuming that we're each town is going to have a CVSD budget presentation at their local town event yep. right so to you don't necessarily have to do your presentation here as well so maybe it's only a short well I, I short. think that's I think that varies Exactly. Town town, yep. I don't see that happening in Heinsburg, but I, I don't know, Ray. Okay. All right. Any further discussion on the articles? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the articles as written, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Move to 5.4 approve announced tuition. Could I get a motion to approve the announced tuition mm. as? Okay, uh, discussion, we have a sheet in here that has uh, kindergarten, first through sixth, and then secondary tuition. Any questions? Can you just refresh my mind, because it seems a little backwards. If equalized pupil pupils are weighted heavier to high school kids because they cost more to educate, why do they have a lower tuition rate? <coughs> Uh, it's based it, well it's based on our actual costs mm -hmm. right and so it turns out that remember when I did the equity matrix information mm -hmm. and I said this is probably an anom anomaly our high school students right. even on that part of it and that's not a budget document but even in that part of it it turns out that we spend less money per pupil so even though the state gives us more weighting towards our equalized our high school kids we charge Less. They cost less to educate. Because it's based on the budget numbers, right? It's definitely based on the budget numbers. I have to tell you, I just didn't pay attention to. The, it's, it's a statutory calculation, and Laura did it, and I can. We can put it on our agenda. Yeah. No, I, I appreciate that. So if, why don't I promise to get back to you at our committee meeting? Yeah. All right. Any other questions? Yeah. All those? Yeah. Why is it lower than our equalized? Because they take some things out. No, things they take out. Okay. All right. Is, that yeah. <laughs> it is not snow. <laughs> Unfortunately. 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 All right. All those in favor of approving the tuition as written here, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. So we move on to 5.5, .5, which is, uh, could I get a motion to approve a charge for the policy committee? We're going to develop the charge and then approve it. So could I get a motion to? Oh, wait, 
Do we create the motion? Do we, uh, Senator? So usually this would have been a discussion matter, and then you would have developed the charge, and then it would be an action matter with the charge already developed. Okay. That's what's awkward. All right. So we had a discussion last month, of, or two weeks ago, about this, and I think the I scratched out a short charge for the policy committee, which would be to review and update policies for the district, keeping current methods and needs in mind, and that the uh, committee would be made up of one to three board members, one to two building admins, and uh, one or two central staff. You winced when I said yep. current methods in mind, but yeah, that's what happens when a, that's what happens when an engineer writes a legal document. But um, well, it's funny. Um, so I actually had Andy look back for me to see charges of policy committees, and there haven't been that many. Apparently, we've been doing policy committees without the charge. But here's one that maybe, and you can play with these words a little bit if you want to. Yeah. Uh, so um, I'm not on the board. I don't get to create your charge, but this is just something that you might want to consider. Uh, maintain CVSD school policies as required by law or as recommended by the Agency of Education. Address policy needs identified by the board, administration, and or the VSBA. Recommend policy changes, adoptions, or repeals to the board. I like the that. Last part, policy changes, <coughs> adoptions, or repeals to the board. Can you repeat that again? I'd be happy to. Maintain Maintain CVSD school policies as required by law or as recommended by the Agency of Education. Address policy needs identified by the board, administration, and or the VSBA. Recommend policy changes, adoptions, or repeals to the board. Did I say Utes? No. <laughs> where, where, he gets, where he fires his existing lawyer and hires you as his current lawyer. So. We're so. firing you for charges. And We're hiring him, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'd be happy to read it again. I'd like to hear my bells, myself speak. Yes. Can I offer a simplification? I, yes. Just how about just review and recommend policies as required by needs or something like that but just <laughs> review and recommend <laughs> yeah. policy I, I adoption changes was that a, a charge and, and I recognize you had a few things to yeah so this is this is a previous is that, is charge. That a charge that a previous board yes. came up with and yep. approved at some point yep um, yeah I'm not that good. Yeah. And it seems pretty inclusive uh, you know what one difference between Dave what, what you had and, and what Mark read here, and I don't know that, that we necessarily need to include it, um, was the makeup of the committee, and, and I'm not sure that needs to be in a charge, um, but then I'm not sure how we define what that, you know, how, how does, it, how does the, the committee's <coughs> makeup get defined? Where, where, where does that come from? Um, or can we just kind of wing that piece of it? <laughs> I think it's up to the board's discretion to do that and um, based on input from Elaine I kind of feel like that's conventional wisdom as I've heard for this committee yeah. yeah I think if you wanted to generalize it you could just say the committee will be made up of board members administrators and central office personnel yeah and then you're not getting into like three of this two of that yeah that might change over time but defines the three essential pieces. I, I, I think adding that to what Mark has, has <coughs> captured here, to me adequately does what, what we want it to do. Okay. I think that the Talia broader is, um, will offer the board more flexibility for the future too. Mm -hmm. Because right now it seems <coughs> that in the stage of our new board, we have <coughs> more policy review we might need a full complement of people versus going forward where there's been times I know in the past we've had cursory reviews of policy because they've just it's time for a general review we might not need a full 
board for that, or full committee. <coughs> <laughs> Would you want to say something about the time frame for this? Like, this is an ongoing committee, as opposed <coughs> to some charges that might be. Uh, this committee is charged up until the point that they've completed this work. This is a standing, standing committee. Standing committee. Mm -hmm. So that's that should be part of the charge that it's a standing committee. Okay. All right. In in cyclical review, I mean, part of. The origination of the policy committee, it happened like 20 years ago, and I, you know, we really owe Lorna Jimerson thanks for this because our policies used to be all over the place, and she recommended starting a review of policies to try to centralize them and have some commonality among all the buildings. And we, you know, over a number of years, the policy committee did a lot of work and got it to a point where we started a cyclical review every three or four years would go through a section or the types of policies um, and hit that every year. So I think my feeling is cyclical review should be part of it. And um, on another note, I would advocate for more than one or two board members. Review. It, it didn't have the word cyclical, but uh, I, I think that was part of it. Um, and, and I think it should be up to a new committee to define, make recommendations, and define what that looks like. Uh, you know how 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 frequently or or how that that cyclical. I agree that you know periodically you need to have a system in place that looks at all of them so that we're, we don't say, oh my God, nobody's looked at that for ten years. Uh, which is probably what happened once upon a time. Um, but I'm not sure that you want to have that degree of specificity into the charge of you know, how, how often it's taking. I mean, it, I mean, it's pretty simple. The charge is really simple. I don't think we need to make it complex. It's review policy and recommend changes or adoption. Yeah. Yep. It's as needed. As needed. Yeah. Okay. I think we're making it too complex, but. All right. Well, th it's good too. It leaves a lot open for interpretation. Yeah. By the new committee that could then. Wrap. Well, it's the, it's the charge of the board. I don't think it's. I don't want to leave <coughs> committees. Charging themselves. If it's a committee of the board, it's the board's <coughs> charge to the committee. Right, and and I think that that. The language I hear in this charge captures like needs, yeah. laws, and um, discretion. Yeah. So I think it's I think it's fine. The yeah, way we it don't is. need to wordsmith it. It's yeah. Just so I think we're we're probably in a good spot for it. Uh, so could I get a motion to approve the charge of the policy committee as as we've written here? Do Do we want anything as Elaine recommended? Um, at least saying the board or the committee would be comprised of members of the board, members, you know, central office and building administration. Building administration. So I, sure. I, 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 mean, <coughs> I, I would think that's important to have in there to add to that. Okay. So we'll just have one final read and then okay. we'll vote on that. <coughs> uh, maintain. CVSD school policies as required by law or as recommended by the Agency of Education. Address policy needs identified by the board, administration, and or the VSBA. Recommend policy changes, adoptions, or repeals to the board. The committee shall consist of board members, building administrators, and central office staff. Could I get a motion to approve the charge of the policy committee as read? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Great. Um, I'd like to appoint the board reps the to the policy committee. And um, that's the mechanism. <coughs> Well, did, did people? Um, people did. I have you three. might share who volunteered. Right. So I have, uh, I have three volunteers: Colleen, Russ. And myself. Uh, that's where that number three came from. Uh, oh, I thought you said one to two. 
Those are one to three. My, my feeling is four is even better. Yeah. <laughs> Unless there's a last. There were three volunteers. Training. Yeah. <laughs> Institutional kind of volunteered somebody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. I have a motion to appoint Russ, Dave, and Colleen to the um, policy committee. Second. Any, any uh, just further discussion? Did anyone else have interest to miss the opportunity to step forward? I would consider it as soon as the we. Step, I step away from the communications committee. I would like to be on the policy committee. Okay. okay. So could we have to know who has interest? You know, it might be that for those who have interest, even if they're not on the committee, they might be someone that you can send a policy to and say, hey, you want to just take a look at this as another set of eyes prior to the committee meeting or something like that. Thank you. <coughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. So we move on to 5.7, which is, uh, could I get a motion to approve the nomination for the Allenbrook School Building Principal? This information was included, included in your packet. So, can I get a motion? So Second. Second. Uh, discussion? So Who is this person? Angela Fillion, it's in your board packet, the last few pages. So there is a little paragraph that I included about. It was a paper link from. Well, it's also. No, it was like. Or it was in an email. It was a confidential attachment in Sandy's email. It was a confidential attachment in Sandy's email. Here you go, Ray. Does everybody else, has, did everybody else see this? Yep. Yeah. Did everybody else see it? Okay. I'm not seeing emails today. Uh, so went out yesterday morning. I think it went out twice. Um, so we had a process. You knew that we have three leadership positions this year. We have the Allenbrook School, the Heinsberg Community School, and um, a special ed administrator in Williston. The first one that we did was the Allenbrook School. We had 10 people on the committee. Amanda was on the committee. I'm gonna get, let her um, speak in a minute here. Greg Marino was on the committee. Jackie Park, so Greg and Jackie are the other administrators in Williston. There was a key. And Emily Potts, I didn't realize you were there. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm representing families. Um, we had three teachers, a special educator, an essential arts teacher, a coordinator. It was a good committee. We had 29 applicants in total. After doing a process to figure out like which of the applicants uh, rose to the top, we interviewed four in first round. And after the first round, we had two candidates that really rose to the top that we were very, very happy with. They came back for a second round, and um, the committee is recommending. I am recommending to you, but it is, I'm representing the voice of the committee, Angela Fillion, who is currently an assistant principal in Milton. Um, I think the thing that impressed the committee the most was her collaborative style her deep knowledge of literacy. If you look at the end of the paperwork that you have, she's been a literacy coordinator, a teacher leader, a PBIS coordinator, a writing coach. She's done all of those pieces. So, Amanda, would you like to add something? Um, not really add much. You kind of covered all of it. She was very well received by the committee. So, and it, But I gotta say, it was a tough call. We had two very strong candidates, so. Okay, not add anything? I would agree with everything you said. Very excited. Emily? No, I'm good to yeah. So we're, yes, Russ. Were there any internal candidates? There were no internal candidates. Okay. There were no internal candidates. Interesting. All right. So uh, any further discussion on the nomination? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of uh, approving the nomination for Andrea, Angela, Angela. Fillion as ABS principal? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, so that concludes <coughs> our normal action items. I want to confirm our next meeting dates. Uh, we have a series of committee meetings on February 6th at CVU at 6 p.m. And then we have our regular meeting on February 20th which is the week before school vacation. Um, later in that week, we have the CVSD annual meeting, which we spoke of. Um, that's uh, the 22nd at 6 p.m. 
And uh, before we adjourn, we are going to go into executive session. You have a room that you could let us into to use? Uh, I could probably get into one of the music rooms. Okay. So we'll follow Greg after this, and uh, we will adjourn from executive session. So. Yes. Can I make a comment? Yes. Um, I, I just, I really appreciate spending this time with you, but I wanted to let you know that I was here because of the front porch forum post that said. I'm sorry, could you identify yourself? Please? I'm sorry, I'm Chapin Kaner, resident of Williston. And I have come to a couple of the meetings at Champlain Valley Union High School, and I was <coughs> glad there's going to be a meeting here. But I came because of the post that said that this meeting is to provide the public an opportunity to learn and understand the CBSD budget. And apparently that's changed since that was put on the front porch forum. And so I just wanted to know that there's a communication gap mm. about this meeting. And the other is just a suggestion when you do this, not to have your backs to your audience. You're doing yeah. the people's business and you yeah. should be facing the people. And, uh, thank you. Yeah. I noticed that too. Yeah. So I, I, I apologize about the chairs. Um, in in opening, at, you know, I, I regret that we didn't go through the whole budget. We have gone. We this is the final meeting in our of our four. And you don't need to explain it. It just was misrepresented, yeah. and that's okay. So I mean, one of the things we will do is we are going to communicate the details of the budget. Um, through local front porch forums and some PowerPoint slides. <coughs> and as you read those, if you have any questions. I should perhaps say the reason I thought it was important to come is because from previous discussions, I knew you weren't going to do something official at the town meeting nights because there can only be representatives from your town there. And you, so that I thought this was right. the official time for the public to hear and input. So, okay. That, that well, sorry for that miscommunication. So figured that out. Yep. <coughs> Yeah. <coughs> Sir, do you have a question specifically that's on your mind, or did, were you looking for just a broader overview? I was overview? looking to become acquainted with the budget okay. before voting on it at the last minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so uh, we're going to go into executive session to discuss a personnel matter, and then we will adjourn from there. I appreciate folks coming to the meeting. and. Um, uh, welcome everybody. Can I get a motion to go into executive session? Second. For the purpose of discussing personnel. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. Great. Yeah.